metabolic disease with involvement of the mitochondria. In med school I learned that the mitochondria are the energy factories of the cell and you can regard them evolutionary as encapsulated bacteria. In mitochondrial diseases, the tissues with a high energy demand are affected most. So in mitochondrial diseases, there is involvement of muscles and of the brain. In Lee's syndrome, there is involvement of gray matter structures, mainly the striates, but sometimes also the pallidum and thalamus. In the brainstem, there is typically involvement of the periaqueductal gray matter, the dorsal pons and the cerebellar nuclei. The first case of Lee syndrome was described by Dr. Lee in an infant and the most frequent presentation of Lee is the infantile form where patients before the age of two present with hypotonia and that was also the case in the first case report from 1951. A seven month old boy eventually died and on autopsy they found involvement of his basal ganglia and brainstem, mainly of the putamen. And on microscopy they saw gliosis and vacuolization with relative sparing of the neurons which once more emphasizes the important role of the glial cells in the energy metabolism of the cell and uh, capillary proliferation. Because the affected structures and this pattern resembled Wernicke encephalopathy, initially it was thought to be a thiamine problem, but soon they found that Lee was located in the mitochondria and that there was a problem with the oxidative phosphorylation. You might remember that on the inner mitochondrial membrane there are a lot of complexes of proteins that provide ATP for the cell and the proteins in these complexes are encoded by mitochondrial DNA and by nuclear DNA. And in Lee syndrome there have been described over 95 mutations in mitochondrial and nuclear DNA explaining the heterogeneous presentation of this disease. And about um, 20 years ago there was a group that looked if there was a specific pattern in for example SURF1, a nuclear DNA mutation and these patients had a relatively favorable cognitive profile and MR abnormalities in the brainstem and septalamic uh, nucleus as you can see here. There was another article from 2020 from the group from Pennsylvania where they looked at 53 patients with Lee syndrome and their underlying genetic mutation correlated to the MR findings and they found that there are different patterns of MR abnormalities and clinical profile in nuclear DNA mutations and mitochondrial DNA mutations. And in this same paper they also described three children that have abnormalities at baseline MRR that were normalized at the follow-up and this is very hopeful because if you think of the first case of Lee syndrome with the seven, year, seven month old boy dying you think it's a one-way road to brainstem necrosis but um, it is reversible and that was also reported in another article from 2022 with two patients with abnormalities in Lee syndrome on baseline MRI that had normalized on follow-up and they also did a mouse experiment where they induced hypoxia and this was also um, favorable for the outcome and resolution of MR lesions, which does make sense because in Lee 
there is a mitochondrial problem with the oxidative phosphorylation and by inducing hypoxia you influence the oxidative phosphorylation. If you are doubting or want to be more sure about your diagnosis of Lee syndrome, you can add spectroscopy and typically you see a lactate peak in Lee. In the differential diagnosis is acute necrotizing encephalitis, which occurs in slightly older children, post-viral infection, and it was first described in the 90s in the Southeast Asian population. There's probably a genetic component and predisposition and a viral trigger, and this leads to edema and hemorrhage in the telomai. And acute necrotizing encephalitis looks like two other encephalitis types that are caused by a flavivirus, Japanese encephalitis and West Nile virus. So this is um, Japanese encephalitis again with involvement of the telomai and West Nile virus resembling Japanese encephalitis. Also a flavivirus visit within the same but in a different geographical region. So besides these encephalitis types, also Wernicke is in the differential diagnosis of Lee's syndrome, but in Wernicke encephalopathy, there's involvement of the mammillary bodies, which is not the case in Lee. If you only have an MR without a clinical history, you can think of neonatal asphyxia, but of course, patients have a totally different story. Other mitochondrial diseases such as MELAS can resemble Lee, and there are metabolic diseases, for example, with copper disturbances that also involve the basal ganglia, such as Wilson, and we're going to talk about that next time.